In today's video, we take a look at how we can turn a simple tile map like this into an easily editable system like we see with our tile map here in Godot, and then ultimately into our scene that we can utilize for our games down the line. To begin, let's create a new scene and we'll use a node called the tile map here. And we're gonna open this up. Now, when we go to create our tile map, the very first thing we have to do is in the top right, we'll go to tile set and we'll create a new tile set. And that's gonna give us the option to start editing this tile map and put an actual tile set in there to use for our tiles. Before we begin, we're able to change the size of our cells for our tile map. So if we know our tiles are 32 by 32, 12 by 12, 16 by 16, we can change this value here before we get any further. Then at this point, if we go down to the bottom, make sure we're set on the tile set section and we can either press the plus button or we can just drag and drop our tile map in to this tile set. The one that I'm using for this tutorial is from the Cozy Asset Pack by Ishtar Pixels, and you can find the link down below in the description if you want to go download this yourself. Once I drop the texture in place, it's going to tell me that the texture was modified and do we want to automatically create these tiles. Typically, I like to say yes to this because if I set my cell quadrant size correctly and it matches the tile size from my tile map, when I press yes here, down in our section below with our tiles, we're going to see that it starts to break it up 16 by 16. If we have any margins or separation, we can change these values over here on the left. So that way then it's going to match our grid up with the actual textures and the actual tiles that we have set up in this tile map. Similarly, if we did not set the texture size or the cell quadrant size correctly, we can change that here as well. The texture region size can be edited inside of this setup tab. With this all in place, I can zoom in, I can pan around, and we can start to see what the actual tiles are going to look like. And they're going to be 16 by 16 cells, and they're just going to have a coordinate. Now, for certain things like these trees down here, it might make more sense for us to have a 32 by 32. So we just have a four cell tile instead of having to pick each corner individually. For that, we can grab our little eraser tool here and... I'll just click off or we can hold shift and click and drag to erase those cells and then uncheck my eraser and we'll just hold shift and drag across and that's going to give us those big cells here. So that way now when we go to place these trees in place, we don't have to pick all four corners or in the case of our house over here, I can erase the entire texture and then we can paint this all on as one. So that way when I go to place this, I don't need to pick all the individual pieces of this house. It's just one pick, one click, and one place. To actually place these things in space, down at the bottom, we'll switch from tile set to tile map, and then we can start to paint. Now with this, it's pretty easy. We pick the cell that we want to paint, and we can start to place them. Basically just click and drag, or click and click to place. Now, when I hold the shift key here, that'll give me a line. And as I go through, it'll change that line to match whatever angle we're placing. Now, if I hold shift and control, now, if I hold control and shift here, we're going to be able to put a rectangle down and place this thing out. Um, if we don't want to see the grid anymore, we can change this option over here. It's going to just turn it on and off if we want to see what we're doing a little bit better. If we want to add multiple tiles at once, we can pretty much just hold shift and pick them all at one time and then I can place them down inside of my scene. So if we want to put a huge chunk together, we can do that. Now we have some other tools at our disposal. We can have the line tool and that's just going to allow me to draw them out in a line is if we held the shift key as we were working. We also have the rectangle tool that will do a similar thing. It's just going to emulate the control and shift. And we also have this paint bucket command. So if I had something that looked like this or we had an area in the middle, I could fill that in using the paint bucket really easy. And then some additional tools, we have the picker so I can pick what I want and then I can start to paint it. It'll grab it out of my tile map below and then the eraser tool. Now for certain things like these path tiles here, what I'll do is I'm gonna pick all four of these and I can enable the randomization or the scatter here. So when I go to draw these, it's going to give me a random selection based on those four tiles. So if we had like flowers, we had the different grass textures here that I wanted to utilize. We can do the same thing and then just draw 
a random patch of grass so we don't have to manually place everything. Before we get any further in this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. All the tiles I've placed so far can typically be considered as background tiles. They're all going to be just the floor, they have a color associated to them, but some of the ones with transparency, my fence, these logs, this tree here, when I go to place them, sometimes I get occluded because they're all on that same layer or that same Z index. An easy way to fix this is inside of this tile map over on the right, we can go to layers and I'll give this first layer the name ground so we know that it is a ground. And then inside of the tile map or the tile set down here, we have a drop down for layers. If I wanna add an additional layer, I can click add element. We'll call this one objects. And then as I'm placing tiles, I can switch between them and it's gonna ghost out everything that's behind me. So now I can place my trees down and not have to worry about my ground showing up above my trees. And if I get out of this and just go back to my normal view, maybe I go to a different node, we're gonna see everything get unghosted and we'll see it all as we would expect it to do. What I'll do here is I'm just going to go through, I'm going to continue adding to this scene using the same tools that we had before, just painting on some of the tiles. Looking at my little scene here, I have my guy, I have my patch of trees, I have my fence, and sometimes I might want to reuse a certain aspect of this, whether it is a group of trees I set up, whether it's a set of fencing that I have set up, or just a really nice formation I've created with my tiles. But if I look at my tile map and go into that tile set, there's not always going to be that pattern here. And I could go in and edit, I could go back and add that into my tile set so I could reuse it over and over again but that kind of takes away the nature of why we're using a tile set to just have the individual tiles here. So instead we can utilize patterns. So if I go to the tile map section, I go to patterns, really it's as simple as selecting what I want to use over and over again, and then I can drag and drop that below. I can also use copy and paste. What this allows me to do then is grab this pattern and then use my tools and just place them inside of my scene. So it's a really nice way to duplicate what we're working on if I wanna utilize a similar grouping of tiles over and over again. Now, because these are just tiles, then it's not a problem. I can come in and I can erase certain sections and modify them however they go. But for things like fencing, maybe groups of trees, we have that control to make them a pattern and just utilize over and over and over again.